Hi there and welcome to another Bug Bytes tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to create tree maps in Python and specifically we're going to look at how to visualise the goals scored in the English Premier League last season using these tree map data visualisations. All the code will be on GitHub for this tutorial and there will be a blog post you can check out. Links are in the description so let's get started. So we have a notebook here and we're going to install a library called Squarify which will help us calculate these tree map areas. But first of all, let's have a look at what a tree map is. I've got this tab here. And you can see that a tree map it has rectangular areas for each category or each particular thing you're looking at. And the area of each rectangle represents the numerical quantity overall. So it's like kind of like a way to represent numerical information and encode that within a rectangular grid. So it's a hierarchical look at the data. So Squarify is a library that allows you to, um, it's a Python library that allows you to define that layout from a set of attributes. Now we're going to see how to do that um, in a little bit, but first of all, let's go to our notebook. We've installed Squarify and I'm going to import some libraries and we're defining a base URL. Let's make that a bit bigger. And that's set to a Wikipedia article. So if we look at that article, um, what we're going to do is try and scrape this league table data using beautiful soup and if we can do that we can then create a tree map from the goals scored for each team in the league and we're going to see what that looks like a bit later on but first of all we need to scrape the data so if we inspect this element you see that what we need is a it's a table a HTML table element with a class of wiki table so let's start by trying to find that so we have a soup object and we've loaded in our um, HTML. So now we can use soup.findall to try and find particular elements. And we're trying to find a table element with a class of wiki table. So that will give us back a list. The find all method gives a list. But unfortunately, we'll see that there are actually 12 wiki tables in this particular Wikipedia page. So that's too specific. We can't get what we need just from that. So we need a better way. So what I'm going to do is, what we can do is find the span, this span here with the lead table. That's the header for that section in the Wikipedia document. And you can see it's got an ID, which means it's a unique ID in the whole document. We can find that and we can find its parent H2 element. And then we can find the next table sibling from there to get the wiki table that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the league table ID. So I'm going to use soup.select1 for that. Now an ID is unique, so we know we're only going to get one result. And we're selecting an ID, which is a hash in CSS. And it's called league table. So that should give us back that span. And then we can actually get the parent element in the HTML document which is the h2 element. And from there, we can call a function, I think it's called find next sibling, and we'll pass table. And that actually gives us back the table that we need. So we're building up a, a statement here, and we're looking through the HTML document to find what we need. So once we have the table, um, what we can do next is we can iterate over the rows in that table. So I can find all the rows. Um, let me go back to the browser developer tools here. So the table has a body, but it has a bunch of table rows under it. And each row represents, if you can see where the highlighting is, it represents a particular row in that league table. So we'll find all the TRs by calling table.findall. And this will find all the ch children of the table that are TR objects. And what we need to do as well is we don't, we're not interested in this header row um, because that only contains the headers, position, team, played, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter that out. Uh, we're going to get rid of that first row by saying we, we want only the row two, and remember it's zero index, so that will be one up to the end of the, uh, the list. So that will give us back the rows that we're interested in. If we look at the first row in the table, we see we're getting numbers here rather than what we would have got otherwise, which would have been these titles. So we've got the rows. Now we can actually iterate over the rows for row and rows. Now here's what we want to extract from this league table. We want the name, we want the goals for. So let's start with the name. I'm going to say team name equals 
and it's going to be row and we're going to use beautiful soup again to find this data so if I look at each row you can see that there's a bunch of TD elements but there's only one TH element and the TH element actually corresponds to this column with the team so we can easily get the team name by looking at the find uh, I'm going to use the find function and we're going to find the TH element under that and extract the text so if we do that and execute this code we should get back the team names and there's some new lines as well which we can strip off with Python's string.strip method so we found the team names, that was easy T uh, we're going to get the goals for now and again it'll be something we'll call in the row the row row.find all and we're going to find all the TD elements this time because everything except that one column is a TD element once we've got all the TD elements into our list we're going to index into it at the right point we're going to do this manually with an integer maybe not the best way but it will work so we've got the, the, goals, the goals for column is let's find out which index that's at so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so it's index 5 so once we've found all we'll go to index 5 and we'll call dot text dot strip so then we can do an f string to see if this works team name and goals for and you can see we're getting back Man City 83, Manchester United 73, Liverpool 68 and that corresponds to the data that we actually want from that table. So now we've got that we can set up a container, uh, I'm going to say team data, that's going to be an array and to that we are going to append a dictionary with this information that we have parsed from the document. So name being equal to team name and goals for being equal I'll just call that scored actually being equal to GF so we'll execute that uh, I'm going to get rid of this print statement and once we've got that we can actually inspect the team data and just make sure everything we're getting is as we expect and you can see that we are getting everything there as we intended to get it so the next step in this tutorial we're going to use this squareify library to compute and plot this data so what we're going to do is we're going to extract from the the data the number of goals scored well we've got that there and um, but we're going to make that a list and it's going to be for each team and team data we're going to extract the team dot uh, sorry it's, it's a dictionary so team scored that's what we called it as you can see up here so that will give us just the, the the goals scored for each team and we're also going to get the names the team names and that's going to be team name or team in team data so we've got the goals scored and the names now and we're going to call squareify.plot and we're going to put the first parameters the sizes and that's going to be equal to the goals scored and then we're going to have labels equal to the names and let's see what that gives us it gives us an error and yeah I think what we need to do is actually convert the goals scored to an integer because by default when you parse the HTML it's going to be a string as you can see here so if we convert that to an integer we now get numbers and that should now hopefully let us plot this data and we get a rather ugly tree map here of this data so we're going to improve this in the next section of the video this is just the basic functionality of Squareify, we call the dot plot method, we pass the numerical data as the sizes parameter and then we can also pass labels. There are other things we can pass as well but we'll do that later on. Let's now go to the next section of the video and improve this tree map. So now that we've got that what we want to do is make this plot look a little bit nicer using matplotlib. So let's make it first of all a little bit bigger because it's too cramped at the moment. So we'll use the plt.subplots method and we'll pass in a figure size of let's say 10 by 5 and that will increase the width of the plot a little bit to give us more room to work with. Now what we want to do now is um, let's change the colour scheme so that the intensity of the colour is proportional to how big the square is. So what I'm going to do is copy a little bit of code I have prepared for this and we'll paste that in here and we'll change the so it's going to be so for each value and the, the number of values scored we get the minimum and the maximum to um, normalize a range between those and then we call 
the mapplotlib.colormap.blues color map and we normalize each value between the minimum and the maximum into that particular range of colors and what we can do when we do that is we can pass the color equals colors pro, um, keyword argument to this and what that will do is essentially the intensity of the color map is proportional to how big the square is so you can see that for Manchester City who scored the most goals they have the the darkest square here because that is the highest value in the tree map we can also maybe add a little bit more detail to our uh, to our labels by using an f string and I'm going to not just get the team name but let's on a new line also put the number of goals the team scored and that'll be team uh, scored. I think I've got a syntax error here. Ah, there you go. So now we can actually see the number of goals the team are scoring as well. And we can change the colour map. We could even say greens um, to make this green, which maybe that's nicer for you. And Matplotlib has a, a variety of colour maps built in, so you can mess around with that setting. But um, now it's proportional to how many goals the team have scored and you can see that the, the more goals the team have scored the more area they get in this tree map and you can use tree maps such as Viridis I think that's how you pronounce that if you want to get some sort of different uh, colour map that's not all one colour but I, I think that's down to preference um, and you can even make the chart wider if you want if you want to give it more, more space and then you can really see things a little bit better and you've got the labels on this as well so that's how you do that and we can also maybe take away some of the labels that from the teams that don't have many goals therefore don't have a lot of area in the tree map what we're going to do is sort the team data uh, dictionary the list of dictionaries we'll call the dot sort method and we'll pass a key function lambda x we're going to sort by the goals scored and we're getting the highest values first so reverse equals true for that and what we're going to do now is, now that it's sorted, we extract the goals scored and the names and we can now index into the names. This is the label parameter of squareify.plot and we get the first 15 labels and we plot them only, only the first 15. And you can see that some of these smaller rectangles are now uh, empty, they don't have the labels. You can mess around with this, make it 18. You know, this is very versatile, you could only plot one of them, um, you can do anything you want. Um, I think 15 is a decent number, but you might want to plot all of them. Um, it's entirely up to you. So very versatile tools in Matplotlib, Squareify, um, Python in general. There's a, a whole lot you can do with this data that we've scraped. So let's do one final visualization in Matplotlib. We're going to look at a bar plot of the goals scored in the tournament. So again, I'm going to redefine my labels and I'm going to get rid of the goals scored part of it. Just have the team name, essentially. And we can do that. So what we're going to do is create another figure in an axis. plt.subplots and we'll pass fig size equals 10 and 7 for this one. And what we want to do is we want to call plt.bar and we're going to actually do a horizontal bar plot here so we can see the labels quite nicely and the y is going to be equal to the, the names that we've defined and the width in this case because it's a horizontal bar plot the bars actually have a width that's going to be equal to the goals scored which is up here that's going to be scored so if we just do that in isolation we get something that's reasonably decent for each team in the list we get how many goals they scored as a bar in matplotlib but we can of course augment this with some uh, different things we want to give it a title for example so goals scored in english premier league 2020-21 when we now execute that we get a title just called plt.show so we don't get the text below there so now we have a title which we can possibly give that a larger font size, let's say 18. I think maybe 16 will do for that. We can probably give the x-axis a label here, plt.x label. And we can maybe say um, that's just the goals scored. So now if we look at the bottom of this, we see we have a label on the x-axis. There's all sorts of things you can do to make this um, a better chart. But you get the picture here, we're getting the teams um, and we're getting the number of goals scored as a bar plot in Python. 
So I think that wraps up everything for this video. Uh, the code and this Jupyter Notebook will be on GitHub and you can check that out. Link is in the description and there's a blog post as well for anyone that wants to read through that. There are many tools that you can use in Python for data visualization, for data analytics. We're just scratching the surface here. But tree maps are a pretty cool visualization that allow you to hierarchically look at data. And you can use this excellent library, Squareify, to calculate these layouts for you and then plot them using matplotlib. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And we hope to see you in the next video.